Yahweh bless you. We're going to hear from our Heavenly Father first, according to 1 Corinthians 14, on times of interpretation and prophecy. And so, Father, we thank you for these words to our Lord and Savior, Mashiach, Yahushua. So if anybody would like to speak in tongues, interpret, or prophesy, go ahead. Make yourself excited, <clears throat> because when you force and make yourself excited, it's the beginning of faith. And it is through faith that all things are made possible. You know, the purpose of your life is not for you to be comfortable or to fulfill your own dreams. The purpose of your life is to fulfill my dreams. And I wait for you in voids, across chasms, for you to walk out and produce the faith that is necessary so that you can make your life worth living. Now that I've given you everything that you need uh, to achieve the things that you wish to achieve, but you have to lean on me, not on yourself. Know that as you lean on me and on my word and do those things that I have commanded you to do, you will see triumph and you will see great rewards and treasures coming your way so that you can shine like lights in this dark and perverse nation. Amen. I'll speak in tongues and interpret. Skubiana eleata satakea tumosono ku. Yebiana eleana eki queati setameati. As you fulfill your purpose in life, which is my purpose, lean upon me and get guidance from me, and I will direct your steps. I have always directed everybody who asks. So ask, and I will direct your steps so you can be fruitful and fulfill your purpose in life. Thank you, Father. Thank you for those words. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So what we're going to do today, the subject is a positive subject. The what? <laughs> a positive subject. <coughs> okay. Adultery against Yahweh. Oh, we're going to feel real good. <laughs> adultery against Yahweh. We were all born in an idol idolatrous environment. And that is in a Christian environment. We we're born with doctrines that are not true. Uh, they're not according to this book, but we were led by them, and so we just follow them because that's what our parents taught us and that's what our schools taught us. So we're going to look at this to be able to take this very seriously because Yahweh is a jealous L. And we cannot take lightly what is uh, commonly accepted in what the so-called Christian community, which is it has nothing to do with Christianity, it's actually adultery. So I'll give you an example is uh, King Josiah. So let's go to 2 Kings 22. And he was born in an idol uh, idolatrous, <coughs> idolatrous nation like we were. And so we're going to see his response because guess what? Uh, I mean, his grandfather was Manassas. Yeah, pretty nasty guy. I mean, this is bad news. 50 some years of some of the worst stuff possible. And so he doesn't know any better. So uh, uh, 2 Kings 22, 10 through 13. And guess what? They find the scroll of the law which is what we have. And not to, we're not talking about the King James, we're not talking about the NIV, we're not talking about uh, translations that please men, which is what majority of all translations today are there to please men so people will buy them, to fit in with the idolatrous, idol, uh, idolatrous. idolatrous doctrines. And they have good too, but but that's what it comes down to. So in 10, then Shaphan, the scribe, told the king, saying, A book hath Hilkiah the priest delivered unto me. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. And this is what we should be doing once we read this. And we say, wait a minute here. What are you teaching? What was I taught? And it should be, my God, how bad that is. And it came to pass when the king, uh, did that 12, and the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and uh, 
Cam, son of Shaphan, and the rest of the guys. 13. Go ye inquire of Yahweh for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book which have been found. For great is the wrath of Yahweh in that it hath fired up against us because our father had not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according to all which is written concerning us. That should be our same concern right there. So when you see adultery being committed all of your life, you have tendency to become desensitized. Well, everybody does it. You know, when, you look, when you're in a Catholic environment, you see idolatrous behavior everywhere. You know, you see people praying to Mary. So yes, what Protestants can see in this. Mary. You see them praying for dead saints who are in purgatory so they can get out earlier. I mean, that. That is normal to somebody who was brought up in Catholicism. Yeah. And they used to have their saints that you would pray to for protection. So you had St. Christopher and Saint. everybody's got a saint. And this is all idolatry when it comes down to it. But you have to say, well, it hasn't seemed like it affected them very much. You know, this is what they teach. So that is our point is, to, is do not get desensitized. And we've got to look at the severity of being a harlot with Yahweh. And so just think of that. You know, think of if, if a husband or wife is committing adultery why the other spouse knows about it. What kind of so they're severance? Yeah, you know, there's severance is, that's happening. You know, the coldness is going on, and, and that's what happens. So just giving an example. And this is, uh, you know, through Dallas Theological Seminary, which is a big seminary, and their statements of belief of what you've got to believe. Uh, and this is for the students to go to their university. Here's, you have to believe in the Trinity, the full deity and humanity of Christ. Uh, and we'll kind of keep focused on that, especially on the Trinity. So in the full doctrinal statement, it says, We believe that all the scriptures center about the Lord Jesus Christ in his person and work and in his first and second coming, and hence that no portion even of the Old Testament is properly read or understood until it goes <coughs> to him. Is that true? No. Absolutely not. Where's Yahweh in this? Where is God the Holy Spirit in this? I mean, think about this. No. Who have they exalted the position of Yahweh? Yahushua. Yahush yeah, Yahushua. You know, just astounding. This is one of their, their first statements it's called the Scriptures. That is uh, blasphemy. How about this? We believe that the Godhead eternally exists in three persons. This is normally just taught all through Christianity. And we're going to find out it's idolatry. I mean, it's. It's, uh, it's committing adultery to our Creator. Now, this is really good. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one God. Now, picture how they're going to try to do this. Having precisely the same nature, attributes, and perfections, and worthy of precisely the same homage, wait a minute here, confidence and obedience. Now, wait a minute, worthy of, this, of precisely the same homage. Well, wait a minute, I thought you said there was one God. You don't say the same homage. So now what you've done is you've broken them back down to three gods. And that's why you say they're worthy of precisely the same homage, confidence, and obedience. And so you, you pray to the Holy Spirit, you pray to Christ, and you, uh, to them, not even that. The Holy Spirit, the Son, and the Father. Forget Christ. But, I, you know, this is adultery. And where? And, Christ, Christ, and so-called Christendom. How about the first advent? <clears throat> the eternal Son of God. What does eternal mean? No beginning, no end. Yeah, no beginning and no end. What is this? Well, first thing, you can't be a son if you never had a beginning. The eternal Son of God came into the world that he might manifest God to men. We believe on the human side, 
He became and remained a perfect man, but sinless without his life, yet he retained his absolute deity, being at the same time very God and very man. I, you know, this is adultery. Now you think, Father, well, everybody believes it, so it's okay. Yahweh is just consented to it. Christ is just consented to it because it's all done. Now, this is what we should look at. And Josiah and never be the sense of God to be able to, and actually to be able to tell people, do you realize what you're doing? You're going there to is salvation first. only through Christ. We believe that owing to universal death through sin, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless born again. Is that correct? Yep. Wait a minute here. Yeah. Born again. Now, wait a minute. See, was, was Abraham born again? Was Moses born again? What are you talking about here? So, I mean, just the, we believe that owing to universal death through sin, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless born again. Well, nobody, that term didn't even come up until in, in 1 Peter. This, but this is, this is what is being taught to their students. The Holy Spirit, we believe that the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, though omnipresent from all eternity, took up his abode in the world in a special sense on the day of Pentecost. So he's not in the action. The scriptures are not about him, every scripture. They're all about Christ. Well, now you've made a really distinction between... Homage. Yeah, to, you know, to Christ and and the Holy Spirit, and nothing to say about Yahweh whatsoever. And so you see where this is going, and which we'll see. We believe that some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, such as speaking in tongues and miraculous healings, were temporary, and that the deliverance of the body from sickness or death awaits the consummation of our salvation in the resurrection. <clears throat> so when do you actually get you know, your healing? After you die. Okay. And your resurrection. I thought, well, I bet these guys go to hospitals all the time. <laughs> Doctors. <laughs> what do you think twice about it? You're just like, <clears throat> let me see, there might be one more. Yeah. The eternal state. <clears throat> eternal what? State. This is our last statement. We believe in death, the spirits and souls of those who have trusted in the Lord. Jesus Christ for salvation pass immediately into his presence not into Yahweh's presence so just think about this mm -hmm. not into the Holy Spirit's presence it's into the Lord Jesus presence and there remains in conscious bliss until the resurrection of the glorified body when Christ comes for his own whereupon soul and spirit body reunite shall be associated with him forever with him forever in glory, not with Yahweh, not with the Holy Spirit. So who is who is the God in this statement? Yahushua. It's, it's Yahushua. They don't even say it's not even Yahushua, it's Jesus. Yeah, it, it's Jesus, but I mean, this is how you end your statement. <clears throat> and we believe, you know, the bad people not to be annihilated. You know, this is great. But the spirit and souls of the unbeliever remain after death conscious of condemnation and in misery until the final judgment. And think of that. You know, think of uh, Cain, who's been tortured for six thousand years. Six thousand years. But that's just the beginning because it's endless. Final, uh, remain after death, conscious of condemnation and misery until the final judgment of the great white throne to close the millennium, when soul and body reunite, shall be cast into the lake of fire. Not to be annihilated, Just to be but saved. to be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, Jesus, and from the glory of his might. Not from Yahweh, not from Yahweh. But this is adultery. This so is, and we're going to see this, it's always in the heart of man to be doing that way. So let's go to Exodus 20 to reestablish the foundational truths of uh, uh, people not reading his word and overlooking these things. But if I don't go on that term, I don't have any friends. I don't have a church to go to. So I've really 
that's where the pressure comes to submit. But we see in Exodus 20, verse 1, And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy Elohim, who hath brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of servants. Thou shalt not have other gods besides me. And that besides me is, is face, unto my face. And you look at the footnote. Thou shalt not have other gods uh, besides unto my face. Unto my face. And thou shalt be no images, which we got images also. So here's what Father says, I am it. This thing has nothing to do with that. Yeah. There's no Yahweh. Uh, there's the Father, and that's it. We can't have Yahweh. Uh, let's see here. Aaron, we know in Exodus 32. Let's go to 32. So this is nothing. Well, these people are really smart people. Well, how about Aaron? Aharon. He was a prophet anointed by Yahweh. At 32, 1 through 5, you think it can't happen? And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aharon and said unto him, Up, make for us gods who shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not what he shall befall him. Which obviously he did. <clears throat> and then in uh, verse uh, 21 and 23, same chapter. <clears throat> and Moses said unto Aharon, What had this people done to thee that thou should have brought upon them a great sin? And Aharon said, Let not the anger of my Lord kindle. Thou thyself knowest the people that ready for mischief they are. So they said to me, Make for us gods who shall go before us. The same proclamation today. That's why we have three gods. Make for us gods. <laughs> for as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not what has befallen him. And then he takes off a gold, and all of a sudden, out came this calf. Now, the important thing is, is the commingling to say, we don't have three gods, we like God the Father. Now, it's the commingling, <clears throat> which is always the case to make it acceptable. It's not another god like. Um, What's Buddha? the Muslims? Oh. Allah. Yeah, it's not Allah. All right, no, we're going to just incorporate them into the same unit so it doesn't affect the people. And, and let's go back to verse, uh, chapter 32. Uh, let's see here. And verse 5. I made the calf, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, a festival to who? Yahweh. To Yahweh tomorrow. So you incorporate the calf with Yahweh. And so I, I incorporate God the Holy Spirit with the Son, which is the center of everything, because there's no, you know, when you go into any Catholic church, uh, it's the cross. <laughs> there's no Yahweh. It is the cross. And this is the God we can see, which is Yahushua. Uh, Let's see here, and uh, we won't go there, but Deuteronomy 9.20 says, Moses said, Yahweh wanted to destroy Aharon. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute, these people who are doing this are like Kenneth Copeland or Joyce Myers or the Catholic Church or the Pope. Well, they're very important people. Yahweh would want to destroy them. He wanted to destroy Aharon for that idolatry that he did, and, and Moses uh, supplicated for him and mediated for him. Yahweh did destroy Abihu and what's the other Nadab. one? Nadab. Nadab and Abihu, Aharon's son with fire. A Koran and a lot of other people. So you have to understand, you know, our descent, you know, our desensitizing ourselves. We can get that around now in the United States. Homosexuality has become legalized. And the point is where it becomes desensitized, which it becomes acceptable in your church, because because Jesus loves everybody, let's love everybody, hug, kisses, and, and that's how it's incorporated to tell another generation, like in, in Melania's particular age, uh, homosexuality was legalized by our Supreme Court uh, probably 10 years ago or 15 years ago, 
by saying sodomy was not a crime. Which all half the states have sodomy as a crime. And so they legalized sodomy, which then opened the doors to sodomy. Which to is the transgender and everything else. No. Yeah, and so, but then it's there to get desensitized. Yeah, to get desen desensitized. Now we go to Deuteronomy 6. And, you know, our duty is really simple. What do you think of Yahweh? They don't you know, I mean, do you really take him seriously? Mm -hmm. And so we all have to look at ourselves. Do you really take what he has to say seriously, or are you going to take it with a grain of salt? He says he's a jealous God. Yeah, but look, look at what he's asking us. He command, not asking us, he's commanding us. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, o Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim, Yahweh alone. Oh. Thou shalt therefore... Love Yahweh thy God. Is that a, a, a suggestion, Melania? No. No. Yeah. Now shout, and actually this is all in the perfect state, which means thou hast loved Yahweh thy God. Paul, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in there correctly. Thou hast therefore loved Yahweh thy God with all thy heart, with all, did it say Jesus? No. Is Jesus in this verse? You know, they said, we believe that all the scriptures center about the Lord Jesus Christ, not about Yahweh. And his person and work and his first, what has this got to do with Jesus? Not, not one thing. Because they're not going to say Jesus is God, but they do say Jesus is God. So I'm going to believe in the Trinity, but we're just going to talk about Jesus. But look at this. You're breaking the first commandment. I mean, is that adultery? Is that would you call that a, a, you know being a harlot for what Yahweh for the relationship? And so when we entered in a relationship to serve Yahweh and a covenant to say I'm going to love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. That means I'm going to do what you say to do. But then you say, eh. I said that yesterday, but I'm not really going to feel it today. I'm going to do part of it. And so I'm going to give you part of my affection. The other affection is going over here. And that's called, uh, you know, idolatry. It's not called idolatry. It's, well, because now I've got two things that capture, oh, capture oh, my yeah. affection. Yeah. So I've got two different, three different lovers. So I love Yahweh. I love maybe my husband or wife who is an unbeliever, <clears throat> and I love my political party, which is the Democrat Party. And so I give all my, so I've got my affections, because they contradict each other. Uh, they're pulling one from another, and to be able to say, Yahweh's going to say, that's good, that's good, as long as I'm in there, well, give me a pinch of that. No. And we'll see that in uh, uh, Revelations 14. So we see, well, that, this is in the Old Covenant. How about the New Covenant? Revelations 14. <clears throat> then we have been so accustomed to taking an a, 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 a incorrect standard that we are corrupted through and through. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we can't even realize it until somebody says, wake up, man, what, are you, are you, what did you just say? And 14, verse 6, And I saw another messenger flying in mid-heaven, having an age of body glad message to announce unto them who are dwelling upon the earth, even unto every nation and tribe and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. No. <laughs> <laughs> good place for it or fear Jesus fear God and give him glory if I don't obey him I don't fear him wow. right okay. fear, yeah, fear God and fear and give him glory because the hour of his judging is coming and do homage unto him that made heaven and the earth well Jesus made the heaven and the earth and sea and the fountains of water. 
this, you know, this is how the book ends. We saw how it began. Is Yahweh is the focal point. Yahweh is everything. Now we go to 1 Kings 18, and we see how it's incorporated in multiple uh, gods. They're just part of society because I'm covering my bases. And that was with Elijah, 18, verse 20. Say first Kings. First Kings, 18, verse 20. So remember, Baal means what? Lord. Lord. That just all means is Lord. So husbands were called Baals. Uh, Masters were called Baals. It's the same word. They'll just translate master or husband or Baal. Verse 20. So Ahab, or really his name is Ox, Oxab, sent among all the sons of Israel and gathered the people unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah drew near unto all the people and said, How long are you limping on two divided opinions? If Yahweh's El follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him, not a word. This is really good. So we can say, well, if the Holy Spirit is God, follow him. If Yahweh is God, follow him. If Jesus is God, follow him. Choose. And as we know, obviously, who won this tournament? Yes. Yeah. As you can see, Yahweh won it. Not all. Of it. Uh, now we go to Israel's fall. So this is incorporated. They had two. The way of life, as we know, with Jeroboam was the same situation. Jeroboam is the Trinity. Jeroboam made two more gods after he left Jerusalem. One for Dan or Bathsheba. And so you had Yahweh in, in Jerusalem, and then you had a, a calf in, in, I think it's Bathsheba, and then one in Dan. Bethel. Bethel, yeah, Bethel. And so there's two other gods too, and were people happy with that? Yeah. Sure were. So they kept them together. Was, was it accepted? Sure was. How many years? Hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. We've had this since about 300 AD, so we're probably 1,700 years of this same lies, of the same adultery that the people teaching are committing and getting, getting other people to commit also. So now we go to 2 Kings uh, 12, 7, and we'll see Israel, which was the 10 tribes. Yahweh gave the explanation of why they fell. They were taken captive and lost their country. They lost their two gods. And they lost Yahweh. Let's see, 7 through 14. Let me see, wait a minute here. 12, I'm at 13. Twelve, seven. No, that's not right. Page 395. Well, no, that's... Uh, not telling the demise. I wrote down the wrong chapter. Oh, there it is. It's not 12. It's 17. My mistake. 17 verse 7 right above it. The review of causes leading to Israel's downfall. You should be able to listen to this and say, God, I don't want to repeat their mistakes. And like one person said, um, maybe the purpose of your whole life is to show other people what not to do. How's that? They're in prison for the rest of their life. They've had an eye put out or whatever, lost a limb, and that's, that's what you get for being a criminal. Oh, I'm not going to follow that step. So, Aaron, you want to read 7 through 14? <coughs> And it came to pass that Israel sinned against Yahweh their Elohim, who brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Yea, they did reverence to other Elohims. 
walked in the statutes of the nations whom Yahweh had dispossessed before, from before the sons of Israel, and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the sons of Israel did secretly things which were not right against Yahweh their Elohim, and built for themselves high places in all the cities, from the watchman's tower to the fortified cities, and set up for themselves pillars and sacred stems upon every high hill, under every green tree, and burnt incense there in all the high places, like the nations whom Yahweh drave out before them, and did things that were wicked so as to provoke Yahweh to anger. And they served the manufactured Elohims, as to which Yahweh had said to them, Ye shall not do this thing. And Yahweh testified against Israel, against Judah, through all his prophets, every one who had a vision, saying, Turn ye from your wicked ways, and keep my commandments, my statutes, according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent it to you through my servants, the prophets. Hearken thy... Howbeit they hearken not, but stiffen their neck, like the neck of their fathers, who trusted not in Yahweh their Elohim. Yeah, you know, same story. And we got to realize, well, that was, these are really bad people. Well, we have the same people. Mm -hmm. They're not sacrificing their children. Yes, they are. Well, some Christians are not. So I'm going to say the majority of the Christians, but you have half the Christians who are through being a Democrat. And we're just we're going to talk about Dallas Theological Seminary, uh, Kenneth Cope, Joyce Myers, Evangelical, which are usually the, the most highly exalted Christians, right, are not sacrificing their children, but they do have multiple gods. And don't think twice about it. And if you don't have multiple gods, you're not a Christian. So, I mean, that, that as, as it goes. Let's go to Jeremiah 3. No reverence for Yahweh. Yeah, yeah, no reverence. It doesn't even exist. Looks like they're prospering very well. Okay, three. Let's see here. Chapter three is hard to find, page 716. Yeah, there it is. There is no number three. Verse six to 15. Now, this is going to put it in perspective of idol I mean, of harlotry, of adultery committed against Yahweh, which Jerusalem and Judah did. And Judah, which are the two tribes, actually did worse than Israel, actually worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. And those were Yahweh's people. What six. chapter again? Three. Yeah, mm -hmm. three, cha uh, chapter, uh, verse six. And Yahweh said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, this is Jeremiah, Hast thou seen what apostate Israel did? Those are the ten tribes. She used to go up, because they were, they were already gone by the time Josiah started. She used, she used to go up on every high mountain and beneath every green tree and commit unchastity there. There is, you know, adultery. And I said, after she had been doing all these things unto me, shall thou return? And she returned not, and a treacherous sister of Judah saw it. Though she saw that for this cause, for this apostate, Israel having committed what? Adultery. Adultery. Against who? Uh, Yahweh. Yahweh. I have sent her away and have given her a what? Scroll. A scroll of divorcement. And, and divorcement means to cut, they cut the relationship. Unto her, yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but she also went and committed unchastity. Yea, though it had come to pass that through the levity of her unchastity she had defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and with a tree, yea, in the spite of all this, her treacherous sister Judah returned not unto me with all her heart, but falsely declared the Yahweh. Then said Yahweh unto me, Apostate Israel has justified herself more than a treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou, apostate Israel, urges Yahweh. Now this is great longing. I will not lower my face against you, for full of said I am, declared Yahweh. I will not maintain my anger unto time's age of body. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, 
that against Yahweh thy Elohim has thou transgressed, and that's what the adultery is against. To do. Yeah. yeah, and has gone hither and thither unto foreigners under every green tree, but unto my voice you have not hearkened, declared Yahweh. And it goes on. So it really, what a call to Yahweh to say, you, you got to come back to me, but mm -hmm. you've got to turn. And I'm not taking you back until you repent, change directions. Was that chapter three? Where were you? Yeah, yeah, chapter three, verse six through fifteen. Okay. Sorry. Uh, now we go into uh, Ezekiel twenty-three. Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Ezekiel's full of it. Um, making Jerusalem and Israel as harlots. You said 23? Yeah, 23, 37. <clears throat> For they have committed adultery and blood is on their hands. Yea, with their manufactured gods have they committed adultery. Jesus is a manufactured God. A new he Jesus. never claimed to be a God. Neither did Paul claim to be a God when he cured somebody. And they started trying to offer sacrifices unto Paul as Jupiter. And so he just said, stop, 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 he, he Christ. His garment, the same Josiah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, committed, and you know, like they committed adultery, and even their own children who they have bare unto me have they set apart for them to be devoured. We're not at that particular place. And you see adultery, go to Revelations 2.22. The people will say, well, ours is different. Everything goes. And really, with, 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 in, in today's church, it's all grace. Anything goes. Everything goes. So, to me, adultery against Yahweh. Doesn't matter what you do, you and, don't yeah. do. Nothing's going to change. The way yeah, nothing's going to change. That's it. Uh, because it's, it's a free gift. Now, 222, but here is adultery again. Lo, I cast her into a bed, and them who are committing adultery with her into the great tribulation, except they repent of her works. And so that's Jezebel and everything else that goes into Babylon. Uh, so adultery is, we're supposed to have a marriage with Yahweh. He is it, regardless of my friends. And if, if you don't like my stand with Yahweh, so be it. I'm not going to hide my love affair with Yahweh. And when you're going after unchastely, after under gods, uh, it's my duty at some particular time to inform you that you're doing that. But here's just an example. <clears throat> In our own family life, and so we have a, a, a child who has done the same thing, committed adultery, is committing adultery with Yahweh right now. And we see in, uh, when I can say, I'm not going to obey one of the Ten Commandments, period. And I'm not sorry for it. What is that? What does that say to Yahweh? I don't fear you. Yeah, I don't fear you. Yeah, I don't fear you. I don't fear you. And I'm you're not, not my you. husband. Yeah. It doesn't apply to me. So in Deuteronomy 27, 16, it says, Cursed, you don't have to go there, I'll just read it to you. You don't have to go there. Cursed be he that holdeth in light esteem his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. So we have a, a child who does not respect their father or their mother. So they're breaking the fifth commandment. And so people will say, well, that's not one of, it's not like murder, it's not like adultery. It's not like robbing a bank. Yeah, robbing a bank or stealing. Yeah, to Yahweh, it's the fifth commandment. The fifth or the sixth? The it's sixth. fifth. No, the sixth is murder. Okay. Uh, and and this, this word on the curse is A R A R, but that's a good explanation. It will be observed that the majority of curse sayings will fall into th uh, three general categories the decoration of if you're cursed, the declaration of punishments, the utterance of threats, if you, know, if you do this, this is what's going to happen, <coughs> or the proclamation of laws. 
It is interesting that all these cursed sayings are a reflex of one violating his relationship to Yahweh. So that's what it comes down to. You're going to be cursed because you're, you're violating a relationship to Yahweh. And this has nothing to do with freedom in Christ. That's right. To illustrate, to illustrate from idolatry, disrespect for parents, deceiving one's neighbor, manipulating the disadvantage, sexual aberrations, bribery, this is all Deuteronomy 27, bribery and not observing Yahweh's law all bring the condemnation of the curse. So, you know, do we take Yahweh's service when it says, Cursed is he that holds in light esteem his father and his mother? Is that an option? Is that a commandment? Or is that... Well, no, not today. If the not IRS today. had to seize your property, would you fear it? Yeah, and so, yeah, it's not today. So murder and adultery are not really frowned upon. To, well, maybe murder, but adultery because it's really not hurting anybody. It's a mutual consent. Uh, and so I can't covet my neighbor's goods. I'm just not going to take them. And if I steal, if I have the government steal for me, it's really need me not stealing, but I'm telling them to steal by t taking somebody's taxes and giving them to me. Right? We can all do this, right? And and uh, and bearing false witness. You mean lying about somebody? Yeah. But, it, but it's only for, to one person. I'm, I'm lying about this person, because just this to one person. I've given every excuse. Every yeah, so you're like, myself. that's, you know, the, we're in grace. We're in grace, you know, so yeah. we can do whatever we like. No consequences. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing, too, people got to realize, very simple, uh, we didn't do anything to deserve this. Well, yeah, you did. Can a person become a Christian Refusing to obey the Ten Commandments. No. No. But they would say yes, because that is works. That is somebody, there's a condition here as a covenant. So what you're going to do is you're going to make Yahushua your master, which means you're going to obey the Ten Commandments. And when you disobey, you're entering into that covenant, that relationship, and that is, that's your qualification. You're agreeing to do this before they give you holy ruach and you become, become the body of the Christ. You're agreeing to that. So there are conditions to be met. And what usually today is just say, say Jesus come into my heart and it's done. Got it. All right, check Did I agree anything? Well, come into my heart, what does that mean? I don't know. But that's what you told me to say. You know, love, love, love. Fornicate? Well, yeah, I fornicate. It's all right. It's all just Everybody lie. fornicates. Everybody. It's consensual. I'm going to, we're going to get married sometime, though. It's like one person said, uh, why, why uh, buy the cow if the milk is free? You ever hear that? That's how you sexual no, that relations. the way it's said. Yeah, but, but, okay. it, but sexual relations with an individual, I'm getting the, the milk for free. Why buy the cow? Uh, now we go to, the, the difference is we're in grace, but let's just see about grace. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, <coughs> we kind of sum it up here. Yeah, there's a real, little problem here about being, being before the judgment seat of the Christ. Okay? 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all for we all must needs be made manifest before the judgment seat of the Christ. Wow, or the Mashiach. Remember, Christ is Greek. I should say Mashiach, which is Hebrew. Uh, Christos is where we get Christ, which is an adjective. Mashiach is anointed, means anointed as a, a noun. So anytime in the Old Covenant, whenever they say Mashiach, the Greek text, which was the Septuagint, replaced it with Christos. That each one may get back the things done by means of the body. We're all going to be for the judgment seat, that we may all get back the things done in the body. Well, that doesn't sound like grace at all. According to the things which he practiced, whether good or what? Corrupt. Corrupt. Oh, 
Man, oh, wait a minute here. Nobody told me this was going to happen. Now we go to you know, uh, reap what I uh, chapter 6. Yeah, reaping what I said. Really, I never paid any attention to it. St. Corinthians, same. Uh, chapter 6, verse 11. Now watch, this is really nice. Our mouth is open unto you, O Corinthians. Is this... Is this the age of grace, what people would say? And, and, and grace is not the right word. Grace, grace means to please. It's actually favor. should be favor. And Rotham will do that. Our mouth is open unto you, O Corinthians. Our hearts have become enlarged. You are not straightened in us, but are straightened in your heart affections. How be it by way of the like recompense, as unto children I speak, be enlarged even ye. Be not giddy and diversely yoked with unbelievers, or what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship hath light with darkness? And what concord hath uh, Mashiach with Baalair? Or what part hath a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement hath a shrine or the beer of Yahweh with idols? For we are the de beer, you know, which de remember that is the Speaking oracle place. that where it speaks. Or the shrine, but it's it's actually the bear of Yahweh that liveth. That was the holy of holies. So from us, if we're holy, this is where Yahweh is going to speak. Even as Yahweh has said, I will dwell on them, and walk, and will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Well, that is marriage. See, this is it. This is marriage. Where. Uh, wherefore come ye forth out of their midst, and be separate, saith Yahweh, and one impure do not touch, and I will give you welcome, and will become your father, and you shall become my sons and daughters, saith Yahweh of hosts. Now we go to Second Corinthians 11, finish up here. 1 through 4, you want to read 1 through 4, Aaron? <coughs> I could wish ye would bear with me as to some little foolishness. Nay, do even bear with me. For I am jealous of you with the jealousy of Yahweh. For I myself betrothed you unto one, unto one husband, the present a chaste virgin unto the Christ, or the Mashiach. But I feared least by any means, as the serpent completely deceived Eve in his craftiness, your minds have been corrupted from the singleness, which are due unto the Mashiach. For if indeed he that cometh is proclaimed another Yehoshua, whom we have not proclaimed, or a different Ruah ye are receiving, which ye had not been receiving, or a different glad message, which ye have never, which ye have never welcomed, ye are well bearing. For and that is what we're coming right here. A different spirit is God the Holy Spirit, a different Jesus. The Creator. Yeah, the Creator. He's God the Son, not the Son of God, but He's God the Son. And that's the different gospel uh, that, you know, everything I read through here. So Unconditional much, love. It, it, yeah. This is when you die, you, you go right into heaven. Uh, <coughs> or purgatory. Yeah. And let's go to uh, 13. For as for these are what? False, False apostles. apostles. Apostle means sent. A sent one. Chapter 13. Uh, same 11. No, chapter, chapter 11, verse 13. For, for such as these who are giving you the different glad message, who are giving you the spirit, who are giving you the new Jesus. Uh, deceitful workers transfigured themselves unto apostles of Christ. <laughs> No marvel for Satan himself does transfigure himself into a messenger of light. These people all look good. The D Dallas Theological Seminary looks great. And they, they talk to talk to a certain amount. No great thing, therefore, if his ministers also are transfiguring themselves as ministers of righteousness, who end shall be according to their works. So we'll just kind of end there. But to realize... Our fidelity is to Yahweh, and uh, if people aren't comfortable with that, if I'm going to lose friends because of that, guess what? I choose Yahweh. Yeah, if you're going to lose friends because you, you you choose your wife. Yeah. Forget the friend. Yeah. It's not a friend. Yeah. yeah you're right. You want me to be unfaithful to my wife to be your friend? Yeah. Leave. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. 
So we're going to hear from our Father, according to 1 Corinthians 14, on prophecy. Ah, wake up, my children, and smell the flowers, smell the aroma around you, because I have embraced you with a great fragrance, and through my ruach hagadesh that put within you, you are my children, whom I have anointed with great power and authority to deliver people from the power of darkness and do my wonderful light. So read my word, meditate upon my word, and speak that word to the people who are bite in darkness. Amen. See you next week. Ooh.